Well, 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 good morning, West Ham fans. Should we talk about some transfer rumours? Go on, why not? So, Ross and the Western Network, hope you're all safe and well. Hope your weekend is going well, a bit quite early on into the weekend. But um, we've got some news and some rumours and some gossips all entwined in a very quick morning video. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the rumours second. Let's talk about Naya Forget. I think that's probably the most um, interesting because um, it actually is news rather than rumours. Um, we know that he had a concussion or, well, a believed concussion um, from the game against Nottingham Forest, where he took a nasty blow to the back of the head, um, or basically caused by Thomas Thomas Roker, uh, caused by Thomas Sujek, really. Um, basically not getting in, getting in the way of Suchek's towering header to make us win 3-2 against Nottingham Forest. Um, and he had the concussion, um, and then they're obviously in the international break, but he did have... Um, an assessment by the West Ham side. Um, and now he looks like he's almost certain to join them. He was actually videoed at, on Friday, Friday, maybe Thursday morning, Thursday evening, um, pl- training with the squad. But now we don't know if that was, yeah, if that was actually, it was posted by a Moroccan side, whether it was actually for the, the current international break or whether it was actually a previous international training session i'm not too sure but um it seems though very much he's going to be taking part in morocco's international games this international break they actually played tanzania on tuesday night um in the world cup qualifying away match and so he looks almost certain to be joining up with a the squad there obviously we'd prefer him not to go obviously stay in london and get ready for burnley um again in turf Moor at the end of the week um but the players keen to join the squad for an important match as they kick off their World Cup qualifiers. Um, it appears he will be allowed to play in the match if required as a protocol. A concussion with R- FIFA is very different from the protocol concussions of the Premier League. Premier League rules require a 12-day layoff for the player, but it's only seven with UEFA, which is quite interesting, leaving the Irons defender free to travel and take part in the game. It could be that maybe the Moroccan team bosses take a different view and choose to decide to leave him out of the squad which would be lovely um as a result of what they may believe could be an ongoing issue but that remains to be seen and we'll see what happens when the team is announced on tuesday evening to see if naif is in the side or not would give us probably a little bit of indication of whether he would be fit 12 days yeah, he would. He'd, he potentially would miss out, wouldn't he? If he was, if he was concussed, he'd miss out. Be it's just over twelve days, isn't it? Yeah, because we played on the Sunday. Do we play Burnley on the Saturday? So yeah, all oh, two, two weeks, twelve days. Yeah, what am I talking about? I'm all right. I don't know. It's a bit early in the morning. Anyway, we'll see what happens. But anyway, let's move on. We'll see what <laughs> see what happens before I start having to count my fingers uh, and make sure how many days it is. Let's talk about some rumours. Let's talk about some potential ins. Um, now, as we spoke uh, yesterday about Timo Werner and how the club are desperate for a striker. And that comes with news that we are being linked with another two strikers. Um, now, I appreciate this was Hugo when he was at Rem, not in his PSG shirt, but he's crossing his irons. He's doing the iron sign. That's why I kept it. Um, but apparently, Hugo is the most likely in terms of all the players we have been linked with, uh, particularly in the, in the forward positions according to a few outlets, including football transfers, the ever-reliable football transfers. They reported on Friday that uh, Hugo Ekatike and one other, which we'll talk about in a minute, are both being lined up for the Hammers. Uh, Hugo is a, well, is he the next Carlos Backer? Is he the next Idaka Johnson? But we seem to be a link to him about at least two or three transfer windows now, and it could be in January we'll be linked to him again. Um, he's always been a long-term target for the Hammers. Um, he could come in at quite a cheap price in January. Um, looking back at his 
well, he's scoring this season. I mean, he's, I think he's only made one league appearance for, for PSG this season uh, and no goals. Um, last year, I think he ended up, I think he played 20 odd games for PSG, 25, something like that. three or five goals, I think, in all competitions. Um, not the most prolific. I think he scored. Well, I mean, as a centre forward, I think he scored about 20 odd goals. Most of them were for Rem, um, where he was, I think he scored 11 in 28 plus four. Something like that. I think he's currently scored four goals for PSG and four assists in 33 games. Majority of the games being as a centre forward, but but he has played a number of games um, on the left side as well as a left winger. So we shall see. But apparently he is the most likely in terms of the forwards we've been linked to. The other gentleman we've been linked with um, is, where is it? There he is, is the Bologna forward, uh, jo- Joshua Zikdek, Zerk, Zerk, no, Zerkzy, Joshua Zerkzy. Yes, it's Joshua Zerkzy. Um, and apparently we have been linked with a move for him, but he's less likely than Hugo, in all honesty, because he is, well, in terms of a mid season transfer, particularly because he's really important to Bologna and they're pushing hard for a for European places in Serie A this year. I mean, himself, he's something like, I think he's played, I've got the stats, where are the stats? He's played so far this year, uh, 12 appearances in Serie A for Bologna, four goals, two assists. He's started every game for them and uh, just shows how much of a, of a, of a, how in, imperative he is to the side. I mean, since joining from Bayern Munich uh, last Last summer, I know we were linked to him. Well, there was talks of looking at him last summer as well. Um, again, very, you know, I, I mean, he's he's almost two meters tall, um, you know, Dutch. Um, he's, I think he's played 19 times for the Dutch under 21, seven goals. Um, again, majority of his games have been played. He's played a lot of games, actually. The majority of them being as a centre forward. He's also played as a second striker, the right wing. And as a number 10 as well, he played a game for them. Um, Bologna, Bayern Munich, um, Anderlecht as well. And as I said, he's currently, I think he's got, thir- I think he's 34 times in all competitions for Bologna and scored seven goals, four or five assists. So, you know, not a bad return, not a bad return. So apparently we're, you know, He's another name he's been linked with, but they do say that Hugo is the most likely of all the players we've been linked with in terms of forwards, in terms of coming to us. Um, by all accounts, he is us and Crystal Palace are still very strong on him, um, and he would favour a move to the Hammers. So there we go. And on that bombshell, on that bombshell, keep it on the channel. We'll have a uh, camp in the week, later, later one this weekend. Myself and I think Anton, maybe Holly as well, are going to give our thoughts about who we would like to be the next manager of West Ham, you know, individually, you know, just just to sort of have a chat about it, really. But until that time, take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your West Ham free weekend. Watch the F1 if it bothers to work. <laughs> If the roads hold up um, at Las Vegas, see West Ham's David Croft talk or hear West Ham's David Croft on Sky Sports and check out our Miami's 11 when we had Crofty on. Great, great guy. Take care. Stay safe. See you later. Bye bye.